Hi, you're watching Kolsky Drones. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a review of the iRange X i8X IR8M. The Jumper T8 SG Beta. Uh, this is the V2 version with all the bugs removed and it's one quality transmitter. Hi, this is the iRange X i8X IR8M multi protocol transmitter. As you can see by the title of the video and the thumbnail, I absolutely love it. Um, so let's do a quick, let's open the box. I've already had it open. Let's see what you get inside the box. So, in the box, you get this is fitted inside the transmitter, like the jumper, like the new jumper. 40 year batteries. You get USB cable to connect it to do your firmware updates and you actually get a FlySky S Plus receiver which is quite decent to be fair. I don't really fly much on FlySky but obviously this is multi protocol so I probably will be giving it a go. And inside this is the transmitter. As you can see I bought the white one. So I bought the white version. Let's turn it on. What I love about it is the size. So I fly, I'm a pincher, it's absolutely superb for me. And if you fly something on top, it's also great because of the hold at the back. But for me, I can just very comfortably hold it and fly it. Uh, I've flown my Aurora 100 which what models on here now and I also had a quick flight with the Fairy B 220 Stormer which I wouldn't have flown with a jumper this just feels the resolution is much better the resolution to me feels a lot lot better than on the jumper so let's have a quick look at it so you can see you've got two two position switches there some really nice metal auxiliary 4 and 5 you've got enter exit up down left and right and these are your trim buttons this it's not going to appeal to everybody because of it it looks like a TBS Tango I like it because it looks like a TBS tie. I think it looks different and as I say it feels really nice in my hands. The gimbals feel good, the quad bearing gimbals, they're not whole, they're just normal gimbals with potentiometers. It feels really really nice to hold so. Um, it's got a really nice display, it's quite a big display, you can adjust the backlight and everything. And then underneath you have you update port on what looks like an SD card holder. I haven't tried the SD card in it. It does not come with a manual um, or quick start guide or anything. This is what you what you got. What I what I showed you in the box is what came with it. The switches on the front are three position, and they feel quite nice. The sticks are adjustable in length, and then round the back you've got. The battery port, as you can see I'm running a 2S battery on it. It does come with this cable that plugs in here, so it plugs into there, it's got JST on the back, so you can just plug it in to any normal cable. It comes with that with it, comes in the bag, in the box. It's got built-in antenna, I've had it in bits, which I'll explain to you in a minute. I actually bought this Mode 1, which is a rare thing for me to do, I normally buy Mode 2 and convert myself. Because it tends to be that all transmitters are by, made mode 2 and then whoever you buy it off tends to adjust it. Now I got this from Banggood, they would have done it but their suppliers probably did. And that's the only issue I have with it. When I got it, the airlines, right to left, were so sloppy it felt like, it, the whole stick just felt like it doesn't fall. There was hardly any spring back. Took it in bits and inside you've got a spring on the end of a little 
plastic bracket that the screw goes through. The screw goes through, pushes the spring down or up to release or make tension. The screw, the, the screw is obviously lost while they're doing it, so they put a self tapper in, which went straight through the middle, and it just fell out inside it. So I took it in bits, took that little bracket out, tapped the hole to point to, to a two mil hole, and put a two mil bolt through. Luckily, I had one. So, and the other thing was, it's got screw there, screw there, and when you take these covers off, it, they have a bit. I could try it off, but it needs to prise it off. So, just take a word for it. And there's a screw there and a screw there. They've smashed the casing behind here where the screw was, and the screw's just going through into not into the casing whatsoever. But all that didn't put me off. It literally took me 15 minutes to fix it. It was either that or send it back. And really, if you've ever sent anything back to Banggood or Gearbest or any of them, it's, just, it's not worth the hassle. So I just persevered and put it back together. So, it's exactly the same as the TASG. I'm hoping you can see that, okay. So, you've got your model menu, your transmitter menu, USB, and then what version it's on. So if you go into your transmitter menu, here you can adjust your throttle, your channel monitor, you can adjust the transmit the transmitter configuration. So if I go up to that, and then you've got language, your mode, calibrate sticks. I advise calibrating sticks on everything when you first get it. Buzzer volume, audio volume vibration, battery alarm, backlight brightness, contrast, dimmer time, etc, etc, etc. And then, again, exit out of there. Go up to your model menu. So this is where you select a model. So if you go load, it'll let you load a new model. So just select a new model. Which it throttles down. Then you'd simply go down to here. And then go Devo. And step through the models. And then simply go to bind. When you're going to bind in mode. It'll bind for about four or five seconds, then go back to your main screen. If you watch Andy RC, he did a, a review on this when it had the issues, which I'll explain to you in a minute. Uh, if you watch this, he'll show you the setting up and how to set up switches and, and various things on them. Um, I just wanted to do a quick overview. So, when this first came out, they, they recalled them very quickly and stopped the manufacture of them. Because it had a massive issue with turning it on and off. So if I'd have turned it on and then I turned the the new one on, it wouldn't the old one on, sorry, it wouldn't have started. You had to leave it for like a minute, and that must have been having something to do with the capacitor inside it. That issue has been fixed. Um and then its major issue was on the channel monitor. If you go into the channel monitor I'll show you. So on the old version, the sticks would not centre. They wouldn't come back to zero. Um, they were like sometimes 10, sometimes 15 out. Uh, and if you watch Andy's video, he'll show you. Because the only way he managed to stop it doing that was in beta flight. He um, set the dead band. So it didn't matter. There was a bit of... It wasn't actually playing the sticks. The potentiometers must have been miles out. That issue has now been solved. I've had a few flights with it now. And I haven't found anything I could complain about. It works as it should. The only thing, and it has the same problem with the jumper. These channels here are joined together. So the only way to make this work independent, to make this work as a arming switch or whatever you want to do, is when you do the transmitter calibration, it'll ask you to send to move these left and right and centre them, 
don't just move your switches left and right and center them and then when you go in to use it and you want to select you'll be allowed to select this switch it won't keep coming up with these with the knobs on either side same for both switches so you can either have these working or these working you can't have these working and these working all at the same time uh, doesn't affect me at all I'm never going to use these in a million years um, I only fly quads and the camera quads I've got uh, I wouldn't fly on this anyway but I wouldn't risk this a couple of miles away so range wise I'm not sure it's adjustable as it is on the jumper so you can adjust it from 30 milliwatt right up to 150 so it should have decent range um, and that's about it so in a nutshell buy one 66 or 67 quid I think it was delivered in four days from Banggood all you need is 4A batteries or I would preferably if I were you stick a lipo in it they last a lot longer and you're up and going the protocols are the same as on the jumper there's virtually everything it, nothing it doesn't bind to the only thing you'll need to do is if you want it to fly on a bugs you'll have to do the update on deviation.com go in the nightly builds and there is actually a nightly build for this transmitter don't use the one for the TATSG use the one for the iRange X so hope you enjoyed the video hope it was a bit informative for you trust me it's a great transmitter have a fantastic day thanks for watching